Hey guys, and so welcome to this exciting tutorial where I show you the steps from sourcing a product, in this case using AliExpress, to setting up the store, putting up the right applications, making product descriptions, what things to keep in mind to marketing the whole thing, so which marketing platforms you could use and finding one that suits your product. And this guideline and these strategies that I present to you in this video are the ones that I use myself as well as a lot of my clients, one of them grossing around 550000 dollars in gross sales per month at the moment so this is something that is not a purely theoretical thing but something that is absolutely useful in the real world and of course there are some things that are missing in this video simply because I wanted to keep it at like 40 minutes I don't know how long it will take in the end but I plan to do a short follow-up series for this video so if you have any question or if you want to know more about a single topic within this video just um, post it in the comments for example if you want to learn more about the marketing process post it in the comments and I will make like two or three follow-up videos for this video so if you want to get a notification when I post them make sure that you subscribe to the channel post a comment if you have a question and now I wish you a lot of fun with this video and see you later so let's just start with the product sourcing part and for this I will go with AliExpress obviously there are a lot of different product platforms all there you can also approach manufacturers and wholesalers directly there are so many options but to keep this somewhat short I will only go with Aliexpress since I think most of you guys are using this platform now when it comes to Aliexpress most people are doing this they go to the best-selling directory and they see what what's hot and you know what's what's currently trending and what, what what's nice what sells a lot and this is also what most gurus out there advise always sell what's super hot and what's what's selling a lot in at the moment and of course there is some reason for this I mean it shows that the product is somewhat in demand in general I mean here this handbag is there forever in this top list 35,000 orders tempered less always always a nice thing 113 114,000 orders um, but I think it's actually not that important because if you think about it, tempered glass has been here forever. So tempered glass has been a thing uh, for, for ages now. And it was a hot product one year already, it was a product two years already, and also three and four years already. So just now it is in this top selling section. But it has. I, I remember when I uh, opened my first store, some time before, it, before that I, I thought about, you know, making a little brand for for this type of glass so it has been super super hot for ages but only now it's in the top list I don't know how for how long now I, I assume for quite some time since I don't check Aliexpress regularly but um, it means that products can be super hot and super in demand without being in here of course so I, I understand that it makes sense to go here because it's an indicator that something is popular but on the other hand, first of all, you have quite limited choices on what to, what to go with. If you only take the, the things that are selling best, same as if you type in some product and then only go with the top list of top 100 selling products or something. Because there are so, so, so many products out there that can be interesting, that look good, that might be super helpful for an end consumer, but they are just not like discovered or they are just not sold that much yet but it's actually where your biggest chances are. So your biggest chances are not in selling what's already super, super selling and where you have thousands and thousands of competitors. I mean, everyone is selling tempered less, but your chances are more like in something that is slowly coming up. So there might be products that are not even that are not even that known yet. And this is where your chance as a marketer comes in because this is where you can really make the difference. So if a product is unknown, then, then comes your actual task and your actual um, skill set into play of of advertising and marketing this product if you if you just go with something that is selling thousands and thousands and thousands already by thousands of competitors you are basically just giving it a try you're just making a lucky shot maybe you will get a little bit of the pie as well but maybe not and if you sell something that is completely unknown or very small I think and I made also the experience f for myself and with clients that um, you can really start something out of nowhere by just going for for something that is that is not that big yet where you can basically be one of the first or, or simply create a good brand around it and this is the second part I personally prefer 
and again talking from experience talking from client experience going with certain topics and it doesn't have to be only one product that you sell or one product type but it it should be somewhat fitting together what i see all the time is people creating these general type of stores just because they want to test products and test different things but if you think about it any brand that is big and any brand that is successful is actually selling um one specific thing or one specific type of things of course amazon and stuff like that are a little bit different but they are not really a brand for products they're a, they're a retailer and then it's obviously different but all the brands that are successful in e-commerce are doing specific stuff instead of just trying and, and seeing what's good so they believed in their products and this is something that you should do too so instead of just going for all the categories and always picking the best products and smashing them in one store you should go with something that you are interested in or that you personally like or that you think could be super interesting for consumers and then build something around it. So if you, I just go in one of these categories now, let's say, um, I don't know, um, let's just say I go with something like, let's just make it a, let's just make it a very, very simple example. Let's say, it's summer summer is coming and you want to create like a, a little brand for flip-flops or a little store about this type of um, <laughs> about um, this type of product so it could be interesting to to really make a store that is 100% specialized on this kind of items so the big advantages of this compared to having a general store where you have electronics next to flip-flops next to jewelry next to dog food is that here you can specialize everything you have you can have super targeted people in your store because if they are searching or if they are liking flip-flops it's also way more likely that they buy something different so if you get a if you get a customer on your site because because he liked your flip-flop ad on facebook or because he was searching for it on google obviously he is more likely to maybe buy other flip-flops that you have to offer than buying like a dog necklace obviously so what the pro what the problem is when you're really advertising one specific product but then having a completely general and irrelevant store in the back end is that your customer really has to buy this one product because most likely he because it's just less likely that he will um, go with something else so if you have 50 completely different products and he may not buy the one that you originally advertised it's quite unlikely that he will buy something else because why should he the pro the selection is still small and it's so different and unrelated that you have to be really lucky if he says oh i i don't want to buy this flip-flop now but but you know what i will go with this pitbull necklace because yeah why not right and this is quite unlikely so what i prefer is to go with one specific product topic one specific um item category and then really make something big around it and it, it can be just brought like oh, uh, flip-flops in general so this type of things but of course you can also go a little bit deeper and just take like one specific um type of flip-flop so you can make it like for beach or you can you can this uh, Japanese stuff thing well it would be a little ex exaggerate, exaggerated but um, you, you get what I mean so you can basically craft your store around a very specific topic and the, the advantage is if you then get someone to your store because he's interested then he has a very broad selection within a very specific topic so if he likes flip-flops if, if, if he liked your ad and it thinks interesting then you have good chances that he will buy at least one item because there are so many to choose from within this specific um, um, topic. So, for example, if we just start the real sourcing process now, I uh, have the Oberlo app installed to see which products are for ePacket and so on. So let's just go with the first one and it shows free ePacket and this is very nice. So I, I don't really care that much if it's free, obviously, if it's very cheap like this, then I do. But normally, um, I don't care that much if the product is, if, if ePacket is free. But because the most important thing is that I, that uh, it has ePacket. So what is ePacket? ePacket means that the product will arrive in 12 to 20 days. And this can, of course, different, differ um, in bo to both sides. Normally, it's also closer to 20 days, but it really depends. And the, the, the big 
the, the good thing about it is that it's still quite fast compared to other shipping uh, methods. In this case, it's this EMS is the same, but it's quite expensive. So ePacket is usually quite a good choice. You have, compared to other drop shipping, um, shipping methods, quite nice uh, delivery time, shipping in this case free, and you have tracking, which is super uh, important. I n almost never buy anything that don't that, that, that doesn't have tracking because you will lose any kind of um, PayPal case. You will, you will, uh, you won't be able to send your customer any proof. And if it takes like forty days and you can't send any tracking, it's quite likely that uh, your customer will just charge back or, or w wants a refund because you cannot prove anything. Um, so you you are here now, and in general, what, what you should look for is products that are not too cheap. So obviously here, six seventy six, uh, six seventy six. You could easily go f with like 15 or 19 as a, as a sales price and then you have to calculate how much how much you are able to um, spend on advertising for that but in general don't go with products that you would sell for like nine dollars or six or seven or maybe even 15 because it's very hard to get a long-term long-term um, return on this since imagine that it costs 676 and let's say you'd sell it for 20 and then uh, so minus 676 and then comes the big part of advertising so let's say you pay five dollars to acquire the customer then um, you have like eight dollars left but then you have to pay like your shopify uh, monthly things and you have to you have your um, processing fees and then you're maybe also paying for different plugins and maybe you need the designer and you need the va and this and that maybe so many different things that it can be quite small and especially in the beginning, most people don't reach um, don't reach um, a customer acquisition cost of five dollars for one sale. It's usually higher. So keep this in mind that you that you will have a lot of costs, especially in marketing. So don't sell products that are too cheap because it's very hard to make this happen. To make very cheap products happen, you need a very good upsell strategy. So. If you want to sell this kind of items that you sell for seven or ten or something or free free plus shipping offers, you need to make sure that you have a very good upsell strategy and very good, um, yeah, very good strategy to make it to, to make it work with other products so that the the average order value increases because this means that you can still make quite a good profit by only acquiring a customer once. So this is um, super important. This is a very important um, thing when it comes to pricing. Of course, there are more things that you need to keep an eye on. I have a seven step niche checklist for this topic that you can check out. I will just link it here somewhere where you can go and check for seven things that I look for when, when sourcing a product like this. And it's explained a little more in depth than I could in this video now. I think I'm talking for quite a while now already, and this is only the first part. So make sure that you check it out if you if you want to learn more about it. And um, yeah, so this is basically about this process. I don't like to go into I don't like uh, going in statistics and so on too much. I mean, there are some great tools, and I will make videos about them as well, using free or paid tools where you can identify certain demands. But I personally always preferred to go with something that I think looks good and looks fine and makes sense, where I feel familiar and comfortable building a brand with and building something on that instead of just looking on some numbers. Okay, this sold well, so it has, it has to sell well for me as well. I mean, there are so many people that you can target, so it's quite unlikely that only these few hot selling items work especially since you have so much competition that click prices can be quite high, that your customer has so many alternatives that it gets even um, more difficult. With this being said, if you use AliExpress, like I said, um, take a look at these things, build a brand that fits together. Also, ratings are super important. So in this case, 4.8, that's quite good. So the chance that he's selling some crap is, is, is quite low here at 148 orders and like I said very good ratings this the the, the seller itself has 97.8 percent which is also quite good so I, I'd say this is a this is a supplier where you can buy from quite yeah with, with quite some confidence and it, you won't be scammed most most likely so this this would be a good thing if you 
really wants wanted to say okay i go into into this flip-flop thing and this was of course just an example so it's still a pretty big category in terms of you know just niching down from this one of the main categories to one of the subcategories it's still pretty big you could obviously also search for certain things maybe very very specific products i also sold uh, only one product per store so uh, one product stores and was very very successful with it um, check out my channel if you want to learn more about how to set up a one product store this can be super awesome because you can focus all your marketing on just one single product so it can be very very rewarding and this should be it for the for the first part the sourcing part maybe not really what you expected i thought i think that you expect more analytical stuff but i think there are so many videos explaining this already that it would be important to to come from the branding and the and the other side of this in the next part we will really talk about some nice strategies to set up a store that sells to set up a store that that um yeah that basically presents your product in the best way possible give you some insights about very useful apps that you can that you can um, that you can put in your store to boost sales to boost marketing some efficiency strategies and how to set everything up so that you can really start selling your product before we then go to bringing it out there with some nice marketing techniques let's continue with the second part of this video where we will discuss how to set up everything in your store how to improve your overall listings and what to do in order to sell your stuff successfully so we are back in my ecom project test um, development store that i used to show stuff in videos and let's just get started by picking a theme and actually i pre-picked a theme already because i um made a pre-recording of this video that i then deleted but for showing purpose let's just visit the theme store again and this is an important part because many people tend to just pick any theme and they don't look any further when it comes to which theme to pick but i think it's quite important because there are themes that make more sense for specific products and themes that make less sense and first of all let's just go with the free themes because i think it's not that useful to to spend like 150 or 200 or 250 bucks on a theme if you're just running on a pretty tight budget and so that we are looking at the free themes only now and you see they come with different styles so you have a little more variation let's just um, takes something that somehow matches our flip-flop type of store and what I see is that a lot of people choose Brooklyn just like because it looks clean and everything but I think it it doesn't represent any product every product that well so I personally like Brooklyn a lot myself but more for luxurious type of things and premium stuff and, and similar so if you are going with like playful products toys and all these things personally i think that that brooklyn is not the very best choice so for this one let's just go with the venture theme because it's you know it's 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 a little more colorful playful if you want you have a little more options with pictures and and all these things and let's just take outdoors because it's it's more related to our flip-flop theme boxing and, and snowboards i think are not that 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 a, that much of a good fit so as i said i installed it already so i won't do it right now but now we have the theme installed and at the next and, 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 and the next thing now is to add some pages and this is quite important because you need for example all these terms of service things and you could make a page called terms of service and you could for example use the shopify um terms of service generator that you find in the settings and just put it all in here and then you make it visible and um just save it and now you have a terms of terms of service page and you should do this as well with privacy policy and shipping policy and what you can do next is that you go, you go to the navigation and select the footer for example and add a menu item where you say terms of service and this will be a page and you will select the terms of service page and that's it so that's pretty easy and of course you can do the same with the main menu but in the main menu i wouldn't put in like terms of service and shipping it's not that great you this is a pretty good idea to to use home and maybe products um eventually you could one could make one collections and another one exactly about us or our story or something like this and you link them all to the appropriate pages 
So um, I won't do this now since this consumes, consumes too much time, but I think that these four are a pretty good fit for the um, main menu because there is exciting stuff behind it and not the, the boring formal stuff like like um, the, all the policies and, and these things. So let's just move on to importing the products that we chose on, on, um, on AliExpress and put them in our store. And for this, I will go back to um, AliExpress and as I said we have a very big choice of products so we have 3200 only in male flip tops and let's just pick them that are somewhat the style that we are aiming for so for example this um, this these here and and these and these and as you see Oberlo is a pretty cool extension because it will product your import your product instantly so you don't have to copy everything it's just imported and it's it's very awesome it shows you like i said um if it's e-packet and if it's free e-packet the processing time and let's just import all these who look somewhat um fitting to our style and what we want to do so let's just go with these six or seven that i just um imp uh, that i just chose and if you go here and then import list um you will see them all in here now and it makes it very very easy for you to import a lot of stuff from aliexpress right into your store so if you really spend like a few hours you could make a huge 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 product list for your store of course you still have to customize them now so this title here is absolute bullshit and you you won't need anything like this it's, it looks unprofessional it looks like pure information overload it's not optimized or anything and I see that a lot of people actually keep these titles and this is just ridiculous. So you should definitely um, go with custom stuff and let's just call it men's leather flip flops, for example, or um, men's fashion leather flip flops or something like this. I'm, I'm not familiar with these products, so I just go with something, something that I feel is right. In your case, you would either go with something uh, something you're interested in or you do of course some research about it to so make sure that everything makes more sense and now we have the option to edit into a collection and this is something that we should definitely do if we have this kind of of um, products so we just go to products and collections and we create a new one and let's call it for example beach and this is our flip-flop beach collection ideal for your summer vacation and now you can add a, an image as well and this would be what makes sense of course if you have for example a picture with a beach and maybe one pair of flip-flops on it or just the beach or something but here you can again be creative and, and create an enticing um, thing and let's just use product tag is equal to summer beach so or let's just only take beach this makes obviously the most sense so now all the products that have the, t the, the tag beach will be added to this beach collection and if we go back to the flip uh, sorry the flip flops here we can just use the tags beach for this one and also leather and since it's a pure male flip flop store um, we don't need this but if it's for both genders you would also add male but this makes here it doesn't make any sense so for this one let's let's just go with beach and leather and type well we don't have a type defined let's just let's just skip this for now we have beach and leather and obviously we can also add it to the collection right here in Oberlo but I like to add some tags as well so that we can later on edit at uh, the products to multiple collections and now we go with with these um, 2016 or 17 fashion flip-flops and actually when I'm thinking about it now since we have a pure male flip-flop store actually we don't have to put in this man's here as well but I will just keep it for now to make sure that show you the right thing but it's not very useful in this case and here I will fashion flip-flops 
um, and go with actually they also f kind of fit to the beach as well but they are not leather it doesn't look like this let's take a close look at the variants um, right here so they have quite a lot of inventory and this is the SKU of the supplier so this is an individual number or code here's the size another very very important part is the description also right now it looks like super um, super static and this is this is not really convincing so right now you have some information department name item type you know this is this is super like artificial and people are don't won't go crazy about it and especially if you don't have a perfect picture people will will pay even more attention to the description so if both of if, if the picture isn't perfect they will look even closer and while you can keep this so that you have some more information it always makes sense to add a few lines on top where you really talk about the product and i made a video about how to create a very good product description so i won't be going into detail here too much i will just link it so that you can take a look if you are at this point of the video but um just have anything I don't know, super awesome leather flip-flop. So I don't want to spend more than 10 seconds on this now since I have this video. Just take a look if you are at this point and um, you see how to, to do something like this. And maybe you can also go with something like that and make a line between your top description and the pure details that are boring. And you can also, of course, make this bold. Um, okay, and now, we, like I said, we have the variants, and now we have the images. So you have a lot of different images, and you have to see which of them look fine for you. So maybe this here doesn't really make sense, I think. Um, so we will, for example, choose this and this, and eventually also this. So you have them in the background. is is never that that bad to have some background to the image so that people can really see how it looks like in reality because this is a good picture with no background so the 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 product is in pure focus but it's always a good idea to have some background so it looks a little more natural and people can see how it looks like in, in real and of course you can also use the size guide as well and let's say you have multiple of these so just the different colors and yeah, that, that's, let's say that's it for now. And now you have a complete um, product done. Of course, you, you, you would optimize all these things. And now you can just push it to the shop. And now it's gone here from the import list. So here are all the products that you just imported from AliExpress, but they are, that are not pushed to your store yet. And if I go back to this and then to products, you will see that we have the 2017 fashion flip-flops in here with 996 in stocks combined for all the variants and here it was here is what it looks like so again all the boring features and on top you have the, the description that should be very enticing and that 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 you can look the take a look at the video and now you can also make create different pictures for all the different variants um, so it makes sense to use these, of course, so that if people click on, on, on one of them, um, they will see this image. And now we have different sizes, so you can use color and then blue and color and red. Oh, no, this, so the one that I call black, uh, red is actually black. Um, so this one is apparently is the, the, the black one. But you get the idea so you now have different colors with different sizes and now you can either make the the size the sub part of the of the variation or you can create completely different variations and this of course is not that easy so i recommend that you use an additional plugin for this for example um i think it's called something like product variation something i will link it as well it makes it quite easy i think that there is one that is even free where you can make like different variations with sub variations because obviously the blue ones and the black ones have different sub variations with different sizes so just 
try this plugin out and make the different um, sizes for the different colors. It's, it's very easy to, to um, use in this case. And another thing that is important when creating the, the products is something that 99% of all people leave out. And this is a page title and a meta description for search engines. So if you have 2017 fashion flip-flops as a, as a page title, now you can add a meta description saying um, fashion flip-flops for men, ideal for a nice day at the beach, red and blue available, free shipping worldwide, fast support. So something like this that will appear in, in the search in, in search engines so that people when when people are looking for these kind of things, they may see it in the in the results. So it always makes sense to put in the meta description, even though you're not focusing on SEO. Maybe sooner or later you want to go in this direction and then it makes sense that your product have a good meet, uh, meta tags already so that they like um, have a better chance of getting clicked when people look for this or even better chance of, of showing up at all. Even though I know that most of you guys are focusing on paid advertising, but this is always a pretty good idea to, to um, go with. And it also makes sense to use a great link. So in this case, 2017 fashion flip-flops is nice, but if it would be something like, you know, this, then it's not very useful because people should see exactly what the product is about when seeing the URL. <clears throat> so let's just continue after this with useful apps that I think you should use because they, they make a lot of sense to have and they are very, very handy, most of them being free. So Uberlo, you have so you, you saw it several times now, I won't talk about this anymore. Clavio email marketing is a nice thing to customize your email templates so that people can actually see, um, so that you can actually make different templates for um, shipping confirmation, for order confirmation, for account creation. And if you do it manually through um, settings and notifications, it's quite a lot of work. So let's say you go to order confirmation and now you have this stupid email body thing and it's almost impossible to make a great um, template for this because it's like super, super hard to edit. And what Clavio email, um, what you can do with this Clavio app is that you have a very easy interface where you can just build it with different blocks and put it in and you can craft your own email notification templates and brand them with your logo and everything. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And I also have a video about this. Check it out if you want to know how to um, create these templates. Tidio live chat is another great tool so that people can see um, a live chat on the on the bottom right or bottom left or wherever you want to have it. And if they have any questions, they may not want to send you an email because it takes too much time. But it's quite easy to just get um, to send you a quick live chat message. So I made very good experience with this. A lot of people that wouldn't have bought something else um, without it. I think I converted quite a lot of them only because of live chat. So take a look at this, especially if you sell higher, um, higher price products. Then there are some more very nice tools that you should take a look at. And here we can um, use the image optimizer. I think it's also from Oberlo itself. Minifier, this is something that I use. Of course, there are more than this, but I think this one is quite cool and you pay one cent to two cents per image to that there is up op to optimize and let's say you have on average three images per product and let's say you have 100 products that would be 300 cents to 600 cents then you might have some more products like logo and so on so it's quite cheap so usually you just pay a few bucks and they can reduce the file size quite drastically and this helps you drastically improving your loading speed as well. So it definitely makes sense because a slow website is a huge no-go. And if people land on your site and it takes just a few seconds more to load than you could achieve, you will definitely use some, you will definitely lose some visitors and some sales just because your website loads too slow. So take a look at this, put it in your store and the maximum minimum payout is 50 cents. So even if you have just 10 pictures, you will still pay 50 cents because there is a 
Shopify policy that makes app creators unable to charge less than 50 cents. So the next one that you can choose is Lucky, or Lucky Orange that I find really, really useful and I use it in almost all of my stores. Um, it, lets, it lets you track visitor behavior so you can see exactly what people are doing on your page. So you see where they scroll and where they are with their mouse and what pages they are clicking and what they are looking at. So you can analyze perfectly um, what they are doing and where they stuck and so on. So eliminate the guesswork of optimizing your website for more sales is exactly what it does. You can see where people are stuck, what they need, where there are problems in your store and so on. So super useful tool. I will also link all of them in the description so that you can just take a look and, and get all of them for you. Um, the next one is Privy or Privy. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it lets you use email pop-ups and with accident intent, for example. So this is the, the plugin that pops up when you trying to exit the page. So when your visitor is trying to exit the page, there will come up a, a pop up saying, hey, you're leaving already. Um, what about a 5% discount or something? And it's very useful. I definitely saw some conversions just through this little app that is also starting from zero dollars a month. Um, you can also use this for mobile, but there the exit intent is not available. There you can use a time intent, uh, a time pop-up. So for example, after 30 seconds, people will see a pop-up. But I think really the exit in intent is the one that makes the most sense. So people that are about to, to leave will get a discount and maybe they they think twice and, and, and um, buy something. This is a very, very useful tool. Like I said, I use it also in several um, projects. And last but not least for now, I think then we are fine for, for the time being is the Shopify product review plugin. It's free and it's made by Shopify them, uh, itself. And here it just enables you to, to get reviews for your store. So you have the review plugin right in every product and people can go ahead and, and create product reviews, write something about them. And obviously it will improve your search ranking depending on the keywords and it will also increase sales because people like to see products with the reviews obviously so very good tool it's free it's 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 a no-brainer so just get it and put it in your store so that you can make use of people who who um, buy your products already all right so if we take into consideration that we did all this important stuff now um, what is also important, I think it's here in preferences. Yeah, exactly. So Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel, very important thing. Um, how do I set this up? If you are in your Google Analytics account, you see that you have a custom code. I think it starts with GA, and then there is a um, like uh, this. So it's GA and this, and then you have like a code. And you can put it in. I think for for the for the Shopify um, analytics code, you need the whole one. So it starts with some some code stuff, and then you have a few lines, and then it closes. So I think the code looks like this. Um, and then you have the Facebook pixel where you just need to put in the ID. So just the number of your Facebook pixel to connect them to your store. Um, very useful because I would recommend anyone to to use Google Analytics because else you're missing out huge you're, you're missing out a lot on, on visitor behavior and tracking because the Shopify tracking is not as accurate and doesn't have as many options as analytics with all the conversion tracking and different sites and sources and all these things and obviously you need the Facebook pixel if you want to tar if you want to advertise using um, Facebook and Instagram so these both are very important I would actually use them in in any store that you have so yeah that, that's basically it um, we are now practically done with the with the product uh, with the Shopify setup thing I, I didn't go too much in depth with with things like you know setting up your general things like like the different options the different addresses and and gift cards and taxes because this is quite self-explanatory in my opinion also payments you know just adding credit cards and and amazon payments if you're available if it's available in your location but i think i have i've 
spoken about quite important topics and if you have any additional questions for, for, for this section of the video, just let me know and write a comment that you want to know more about this, about a specific topic, and I will um, talk more about this in another video. So this part is now finished. Let's continue with the marketing one. Okay, guys, let's move on with the last part of this video where I talk about some marketing fundamentals for your store which type of uh, marketing and traffic sources you can use and let's take a short look at my adwords account or better one of my adwords account uh, accounts and in this case it's a client account that i have access to and we spent 400,000 swiss francs in total so this is a huge marketing account um, conversion rate of almost four um, percent even though we are advertising a service in, in this case, um, it's quite interesting to see which power AdWords can have. And AdWords is not just a little little side, side source next to Facebook ads, because most people tend to start with Facebook ads immediately. And as you can see here, um, business, it goes up and down all the time. So right now we are getting lower a little bit, but um, you know, it, it was an up and down all the time. Here we were low and then up and then up. And, and this is no, pretty, pretty normal. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. Now, which kind of advertising makes sense in your case? First of all, Facebook is a very, very great way if your product has a very specific fan base. So let's say you, you sell products that are very specific and that are very targetable. Um, then Facebook is a, is a great way to do so. So I'm here in the audience insights for Facebook and I actually don't want to go with the typical, like, you know, the pit bull stuff and I love pit bulls and all this crap. So I will just, just as a test, I will go and type in flip flops. And now, of course, doesn't mean that people who, who are, have the interest flip-flops are like flip-flops lovers or something like this. I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy as that. But, um, you know, in this case, I, w I would just want to show you how to target something that is not as, as clear as the Pitbull thing, for example. Because most people are just advertising something like Pitbull bracelets or Pitbull necklaces or buddha and this is of course very very easy to do i mean anyone can pick some some very easy niche sites and then it's pretty clear but i just want to give you a small approach on something like here where we have flip-flops um i didn't prepare anything i didn't do any research i just want to show you how i would go for this um to to give you an idea of, of how to approach something that is not as clear as for example pitbull buddha and all these things that are that are quite um self-explanatory when it comes to audience insights so just let's just since we are only addre addressing mail um, in our store let's go with this and we have 300 to 350,000 monthly active people and um so as we see we have a lot of different page likes that we can um, that we can target and combat flip-flops is something that I don't think is really fitting to what to what we sell okay no I think it's it's absolutely not what what we are targeting um, let's also go with like beaches I think then it yeah it should drastically raise and now you have an idea of, of what kind of, of things, what kind of people we are looking for. Since I told you there aren't as clear interests for flip-flops as for, for all these niche topics and all these specific products, if you sell something like this, you have to go a little bit deeper. And what we can do if, if we just starting out is that we don't have to go too broad, uh, too specific if we sell a product like this. So let's just go with um, the engagement in this case and let's call it um, beach flip flops post engagements 
so let's assume we only use post engagements in, in uh, we only s advertise these beach category flip-flops that we defined previously when we when we decided that we have different tags and different collections let's have a campaign only for this for the speech um, this beach collection um, and we call this ad set US and I don't know the rest yet, so I will just put in US since I in this case we just um, target you the United States Of course, you can also target like United Kingdom and Australia and whatever country you want to use the good thing with United States is um, That when we looked at at Oberlo and they said things like free e packet and stuff like this We know that this is for United States So if we go ahead now and choose United Kingdom then our previous planning and our previous yeah, only choosing, only choosing um, the ones with ePacket. They don't have ePacket for this. They don't have ePacket for United Kingdom, at least normally. So um, we just stick to United States, even though it's quite competitive. And let's just go with an age range of like twenty-one to to forty, you know. And then only men, and in this case also only English, so that we make sure that they can actually understand everything. That, that we are marketing now like I said don't expect any perfect targeting now no research no no um, previous work and just an, an example on how to approach something like like this so let's check for example um, beaches so that we know that they are somewhat you know liking all the summer stuff and then beach and uh, all these things and now we can go a little bit broader into uh, a little bit more niche into um, flip-flops and I assume that yeah maybe it will go down a lot yeah like I expected so it now it went down to 220,000 because we said that they have to like both and um, you can try this now and just stay as generic as this only using beaches and flip-flops Another thing is, of course, that you have to keep the, the season in mind. So right now we have April and it, depending on where you sell, it may make sense to, to do it already or don't do it yet. So I don't know how the weather is here in, you know, the East Coast and, and you know, all these things like Miami. Maybe if you, if you be a little more specific and only target California and, and these states where you know that it's quite warm and, and you have a beach and you have everything like that, already then you can go even deeper and only target these um target these states and these regions and this makes sense if you sell products that that ha that are seasonal or that have specific requirements keep this in mind that you don't target someone like here in, in alaska or in northern us in the middle of nowhere where they can't use these beach beach um, flip-flops this is something that i see that people actually sell summer stuff to people who who yeah, well, who, who don't have summer yet or who never actually have summer. So make sure that you target the right regions. I have no clue which ones will be, um, which are sunny and all these things. You would have to look it up, but it's quite easy. And now you are at 220,000 and this is actually not that bad. So it, it's not too small. It's also not very big. Since flip-flops are quite generic products, it can make sense to go to 500k or one even 1 million and then see what's going on. So sometimes it makes sense to don't niche too specific in the beginning, since flip-flops, we, we cannot really say which people like really like flip-flops. I mean, this is not as clear, um, th this interest is not as clearly defined as, for example, like I said, 10 times already, Pitbull bracelets. So in this case, we might even consider putting this out, but for the time being, let's target people who are interested in beaches when it comes to travel and flip-flops. So this shows us that they should be somewhat interested in, interested in what we have to offer. What I also like quite a lot is to have people in there who like online shopping. So this is never too bad in my opinion, because it shows that they are somewhat familiar with buying stuff online. Now it goes down to, down to 170,000 people. It's quite low for such an item. I mean, if it's if it's a high-priced item, um, very specific interest, then it's it's super fine, 170,000. But since this is very broad, um, well, you might want to keep it a little bit broader. But this requires now that you do some more product research, and and this is what I want to show you in this video now, 
how to deal with a more general approach, a more general niche, a more general product. Because I think the very, very easy ones, the very self-explanatory ones are not that useful all the time. Another important thing is that you should only use one placement at once. So when people use Instagram, Facebook, write column, instant articles, everything at once, they forget that they're totally not optimized. So when you have the same ad for, for a write column ad and for a feed, it's terrible because on the right column it's not optimized. It will only show you know the picture in a very sh very small um, way. The description will be cut at a certain point. The, the the title may not display correctly, and all these things. So for now, let's only go with the feed. And of course, this makes the click price a little higher because the right column click price is an, or the impression price is, is lower than the feed one, and we will also get less impression in in total. But this is fine because that way we can optimize everything just to this one, um, to this one um, placement. And now we saw that it actually went down to twenty-seven thousand. So in this case, all right, if you want to stay with only this one, we might have to to cut one off. And this is something that you you should also keep in mind. Of course, you want to only have one um, placement that you use at a time. But if it makes your potential reach too small and 27,000 is definitely too small for our product, then you would have to go with something else and eventually think of, you know, also using Instagram feed or maybe in this case also just removing the Facebook feed and going with Instagram only because it seems that here we can reach way more people for the things that we, um, that we chose. Now, mobile and desktop is not that bad to put them both together because, because then we can really see um, which works better. So sometimes we assume that Facebook, uh, that, that mobile makes more sense or that desktop make, makes more sense, but we actually made the wrong assumption. So when you use both, this is, this is fine because this way we can really see where our traffic and where our converting traffic comes from and then continue with using only this device. But for now, let's just use both. I think it makes the most sense. This is the way I do it. And let's start, for example, with the typical five euros to test. You can also use 10 if you want to accelerate the things a little bit. Because obviously, the more you spend in the beginning, the faster you have some data to play with. And if you go with five, it's fine in terms of risk. So you save money and it's a little less risky. And if the, if the product and the way you present it is totally shit, then um, you spend less money. But let's say you, you say... Um, let's say you think that it makes more sense to only do it like for two or three days. You can also use 10 euros and then you have your insights faster. You have to decide for yourself whether you rather play the game a little less risky or, or rather save time. Um, and now we just run them continuously starting today and then we just cancel them at a certain point and we optimize them for post engagements. We start with automatic bidding. I personally switch to manual, manual once I reach a good click price and overall prices that, are, that I'm fine with then I go to manual but I always start with automatic so that I can get an idea on of uh, how much I have to pay usually and where I can improve and all these things instead of limiting myself too early by going with manual immediately I think manual is really nice um, it's a really nice way to optimize your your prices later on and your co and, and decrease your prices um, decrease your costs I mean but it's not very useful to go with manual from the beginning on so yeah this looks okay like i said more research in this case but it looks fine for a general kind of thing and now we um just changed the ad name to beach instagram beach ad and now i you see one of my old facebook pages my old Instagram account and one of my YouTube videos as a post. Obviously, this isn't this isn't very useful now. So we just create a new ad. And now we have different options. So we can use a slideshow, and um, that way we can, for example, put in different different products that we have. So you remember that we put in a lot of different flip-flops. I just have to get to the category again, flip-flops for men. Um, 
we can for example take this picture this picture this this or in this case no these are not really typical beach sandals uh, beach flip-flops this this and you know all the ones this one that are fitting for for beach and we put them all in this slideshow and then we make some nice beach background music and um, make a slideshow with up to 10 images showing all of them like for five seconds and people can really see what this is about now what what i like even more is usually the carousel ad because this way people can really browse themselves and can just switch left or right but this isn't um, doable with the post engagement ad so then we would choose and uh, have to choose another one like link click to to um, enable the carousel ad now we would just browse the library now or better uh, we would upload our own images now use the ones that I just showed you that are related to beach play some nice background music maybe even have like a speaker someone who, who talks about them here we have our nice speech flip-flops blah 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 um, this can be pretty nice so th this way you can create an ad that is really exciting and enticing and um, now when you, when you go like this on Instagram you don't have that many options like on Facebook um, let's just use uh, oh sorry For now, let's just um, go with the stock images just to show you so that, that we make sure that I make sure that you can see what's going on. For example, let's just go with this one. It's had, it doesn't have the perfect Instagram um, dimensions at this point, but I think this way you you can really see what I mean. Um, image duration, let's say five seconds. Aspect ratio, yeah, it's it's all fine. And now here we can add the the music, and there you can either choose something that that is super super um, super fitting for this. So maybe chill way for something. But you can also upload your own track. And here we can use like a super cool beach type of feeling and and underline your products even more. Okay, so let's. Okay, right, we have to. Of course, we have to um, put in one more picture at least. So let's maybe they also have some flip flops footage. Yeah, so you can put in this, and actually, it makes sense to to put it in the first first um, place because then they can see the flip flops immediately. And this is how it how it um, looks like now. So. You can also choose fade this will it will fade to the other one but I will just keep both of them at five seconds or maybe three seconds or four and then it will show the the slash oh they actually need three right I so far I always used like four so I wasn't sure that this is the case um, let's just add these and you, you know I don't have to repeat it another time I just didn't download all the pictures yet but it's basically the same that when you download all, just all the other express pictures this can um, take a while now actually it goes quite fast in our case um, yeah so since Instagram doesn't have that many options as Facebook when it comes to talking about about the um, ad let's just go do you need summer vacations as well take a look at our beautiful selection of beach flip-flops now this ad looks quite nice already so of course um, you have to show a flip-flop that you also offer but for example if I would see this ad of course it's not perfect and of course you have to brand it yourself and you know make the picture fitting to your store but it looks quite okay already um, this is basically how you would go with it using Facebook or as it turned out to be you see it was quite spontaneous um, Instagram 
All right, so we are finally finished. I hope that there was some value in here. Like I said, there are certain um, topics that I left out. For example, marketing, I only used Facebook or in this case, some Instagram, but I didn't go more in depth on um, this topic. I didn't show you that much about AdWords because I recently made some AdWords tutorials. I also have an influencer marketing tutorial. This is why I didn't mention it that much as well. But in the follow-up video, I will gladly make some more stuff about retargeting, remarketing. Um, branding or maybe influencer marketing if you want just let me know post it in the comments what you want to see what I can improve for the next time and if you want to get notified about the about the follow-up series make sure that you subscribe to the channel that you turn your notifications on and I really hope that you enjoyed the video see you in the next one